In this video, we are going to try and show you how to find hidden damage in a label. At v &E, the pilot reported it yawed a bit more than other labels he has flown. This justified having a very close look and listen at the fin. We tried to film it. First, we rigged it in the hangar and trestled the wings so that we could apply a force to the top of the fin without it rolling in its belly dolly. We also found another label to compare it to, although we later found that the label we were using was a later build standard with an extra layer of glass fibre in the fuselage, making it slightly stiffer by design. Nonetheless, comparing a potentially broken glider to a glider you don't believe is broken is a very valid method of seeing if the feeling is stiff enough. Okay, so what you can hear here is the actually actually the tail plane making that creaking noise g is feeling for a bulge can you feel a bulge g yeah these fingers here are moving in and outwards quite considerably in 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 yeah. like that but that may be normal for some gliders we know on this one that it's actually broken and so uh, it may not be normal so if we compare this with g's libel uh we'll uh, we'll see the difference Okay. Right. In this case, we're going to repeat the test, this time with the tailplane off, because the tailplane was making the noise previously, and I'm going to apply 10 to 15 kilos of pressure at the top of the fin, with my friend here putting his hands at the bottom and listening for the problem. And now here, the squeaky noise from the tailplane has gone. Can you feel the bulge, G? Yeah, I can feel it. It feels exactly the same. I can't hear the noise inside the fuselage. No. All so I can hear is the tailwheel moving. So you might have to put your ear against it, perhaps, G. So shall we try that? Shall we try that? And so G's got his ear against the side. Can you hear anything, G? Yes. Right. Yeah, I can hear so, it creaking. So we've got this. We've got this microphone against the side here. Let's see if we can record the uh, the creaking. Now around this side, the bowl is really obvious, from where I'm looking. Just have a look, Mike, just, there, just see from where I'm looking. Oh, yeah. So Gordon's um, putting about 10 to 15 kilos of pressure on the fin. Yeah. And as we can see, um, G can very, very easily feel the bulge in his hands. Um, visually, it's not so easy to see, but you can probably just see his thumbs bulging in and out where the fuselage is just a bit too flexible. Certainly justifies a closer internal inspection. Well, I've put my hands around like that. You can see the thumbs, the ball of my thumb moving in and out relative to the top line of the fuselage. However, of course, you can't see anything on the outside of the, the fin if G just took, took his hand There's no off cracks. There. No cracks. Might be difficult to see on the video. There's no evidence on the outside at all except the flexing of the tail. And that's with the glider <coughs> trestled up. That's the only way to do it. We did not detect this when we, um, when we had it just with the fuselage out. We had to trestle it up. And that's when we started hearing the, the crinkling noise and started to see it really flexing like that. Right, because otherwise it tends to flex, it just moves in the dolly. Yeah. And creates too much noise and is not stiff enough. Yeah. Here we're going to repeat the check. This is a different label. It gives us a very good comparison. Now, it appears to be stiffer when we do this, but now we're going to just check for sure. And we've got the noise monitoring equipment on it to give a direct comparison for noise. So it is and what still... you can hear there Sorry. is, I think you can hear the tailwheel axle moving side to side. Yeah, that's what it is. Which distorts what the noise signature is going to be. And as far as feeling the movement of the fuselage, to be honest, it pretty much feels the same. It doesn't feel substantially better than the other glider. But it's a bit stiffer, isn't it? It is. It's a little bit stiffer. There's significantly less movement. Of course, this one might be broken as well, Jim. I think we need to look into it. <laughs> 
So what we're going to do next is we're going to look into it and show you, if you're not sure it's broken or not, how to find out. Great. So what we found was that the tailwheel was making so much noise, we couldn't hear what was going on in there, so we put it on a stand, which happened to be the, the, uh, the Libel tailplane fitting. So here we are. We've still got the glider rigged in the uh, in the tug hanger, and we're going to uh, stick this little five pound fifty eBay camera down the back, which is attached to my magnetic uh, extendable picker upper thing, and you can see there the uh, the image on my laptop that you get. So let's see see the uh, the damage in the back uh, yeah and you can see there the uh, the back end of the glider and the um, uh, the push rod that comes out of the, the hole in the back that uh, activates the rudder on the bell and that's where we're going to gain access to the back to stick our stick our camera The next video shows some of the ribs in the top of the fuselage just in front of the tailplane cutout that have broken and are tearing away from the fuselage. This is why the fin is slightly less stiff than the other label we use for comparison. It's worth noting that damage like this is much easier to spot when you're filming it while the fin is actually being flexed as it shows the movement of the broken ribs. That's looking at the that's upside down, so it's looking at well we'll give it a good flex that way. That that's much more to touch because it's moving most of the time. Yeah. Right. Okay. Having established the glider was broken, the job of the spectre is now done. The next part of the job is to actually get the repair sorted out and get it to an expert in composites who understands how to do this. Um, in this case, because I have actually a very experienced uh, self-playing composite repairer, for the sake of the education, we performed a tap test and then we made sure we can cut access holes for repairs between the ribs without affecting the rudder cables, the elevator push rod, the radio cracks, or fuselage flange joints from when it was originally built, and anything else that might get in the way. We just wanted an access hole big enough to perform repairs. In cutting the access hole, we don't want to actually create more damage that requires more repairs. Where to cut the hole can be determined by looking at the glider bill drawings. Uh, in this case, an internal camera is very useful. And the use of tap tests just to ensure no matter what the drawings say, the ribs are not going to be cut when we cut this hole. But to be completely clear, this is experts only. Do not have a go at this without an absolute composite expert uh, watching over you doing this. This is not generally um, for pilot owner maintenance. I know already. Ready? Go on then. <laughs> Hang around here. So we've cut holes in the side now, as you can see, and uh, we're just looking at the side of the fuselage. Uh, you can see that it's debonded from part of the um, uh, from the from the web on the side of the uh, the former, and the damage is obvious. And it's the same on the other side. 
This was a flying glider that had not had any reported heavy landings. It had had many annuals where this damage had been missed by many experts because they were not specifically looking for accident damage. They were just performing the annual maintenance program. Most maintenance programs do not insist that you go into this level of detail at the annual um, to try and find damage, but perhaps they should. The entire composite aircraft industry is always looking at ways of making finding damage easier. I hope this video helps. A big thank you to my employers, the British Gliding Association. Uh, my name is Gordon MacDonald, I'm the Chief Technical Officer there. And also to Mike Fox, uh, who also works for the BGA, uh, for actually finding this damage originally and bringing the aircraft all the way down from Yorkshire to Lasham for us to have a play of it and for making these videos. Um, I hope this helps. Goodbye.